What's up, y'all? It's Christian McBride coming at you from the 2021 Newport Jazz Festival, and I'm here with my dog, yes, Robert indeed. Glasper. Yes, indeed. Now, thank you for joining me, man. Absolutely. You already know. You've been our uh, uh, artist in residence for yep. this year. You've played each day of the festival. Mm -hmm. Each day you've had a wonderful project. You're about to go on with your uh, third one. Mm -hmm. um, how's it been for you this weekend, man? It's been great. It's, first of all, it's been great just to play in front of people. You know, just yeah, playing right. for the people again and, and, you know, just feeling the love, feeling just everything, just being here. Just you realize how much you really need the audience as an artist, yes. how much you need the audience and how much your concerts are a give and take. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? They're and another band member. They're literally another band member, yeah. except we get paid. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. <laughs> I dig it. And that's been amazing seeing all my old friends and musicians and, you know, just it's seeing old fans. They're not yeah. old, it's like it's been a year and a half. But yeah, still, yeah. still just like seeing them, it's like you haven't seen them in a long time. Exactly. Like, ah! You know, right, you right, miss right, them. Right. You know? Exactly. See, it's, it's, it's been great. Well, it's man, great. thanks for being here, man. So sure. we're doing these videos for our, our educational foundation, mm -hmm. and we're talking about mentorship and mm -hmm. uh, just trying to give our young minds uh, some inspiration. So I want to ask you, because, you know, when, when we first met, you were still a teenager. Yep. And you were in college. Yep. Uh, I want to ask you, who was like one of your main teachers or mentors or somebody who got you in, into the music? You. <laughs> First off. No, really, because when I... when I No, but you could already play by the time we... No, played. I could play, but I was still learning and going yeah. on the road with you and being around and being in the band with you. I learned so much more. You know what I mean? Oh, thank and, you, man. Oh, for sure. I was, what, a freshman at college? Right. Maybe a freshman in college, I think. Um... And yeah, you, you were the first person I really, I went on tour with, you know what I mean? In a real way, like on tour, 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 tour. So it was just that whole, the whole, th especially, first of all, I'll never forget, Whirling Dervish. <laughs> we played that in Philly. Right. The first, our first gig was in Philly. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, and Whirling Dervish, man, you counted that joint off maybe t three times <laughs> faster than it is on this record. <laughs> So I'm thinking I can play this. It's gonna be cool. He starts it off like here. I was like, oh no, you know, no, no. But it, it, it was it was very important to have people like you. Um, Russell Malone is another yeah, one. Yeah, Russell. Russell yeah. took me on the road for like three years. Yeah. Um, um, Mark Woodfield. Yes. You know, another yeah. one. Roy Hargrove. Roy Hargrove. Yep. Oh, Roy man. Hargrove. You know, Roy. Roy was the first person that he came to my high school when I was still in high school when I was a senior, and he was the first person I saw that really reflected who I was, right. you know what I mean? He had on jeans and sneakers and he talked the way I talked, you know what I mean? Right, it was like, right. he didn't, when I saw him, I didn't see my school principal, you know what right, I mean? Right, right, and right. I was like, wow, you can be modern, cool of today yeah. and still play jazz and right. still know the language, still know the history of the music, right. but also you can still speak the music of today, speak the language yeah. of today. Wow, I never, I never saw that, not in person, up close, right, you know what I mean? Right. So. Yeah, you, I mean, you guys are the are the blueprint from for what for what I'm doing. So it, I, I was lucky, I think, oh, to have man. you. You know, y'all y'all be that for me. Well, we were know. so happy to you know like adopt you as mm -hmm. as like our little brother, man. Mm -hmm. And I think you said the first time you ever played Newport was with Kenny Garrett, with right? Kenny Garrett. I, oh, I never forget. <laughs> <laughs> Should I tell that story? Please. My first time playing at Newport Jazz Festival, I might have been a sophomore in college, yeah. and it's Kenny Garrett. So I'm like. You know, Kenny Garrett's the, like our John Coltrane. That's right. You know what I mean? Literally. And so when I got the call, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm playing with Kenny Garrett in Newport, boom, boom, boom. So I'm super happy. We get here. I wasn't aware that it was by the water and there was going to be wind. <laughs> I saw people with plexiglass, but I didn't know what that was. I never played a gig out, so I never play. I'm new. I'm right, super right. green. On the first note, ba -da -da -da, all of my music on the piano flew into the audience, <laughs> all of it, gone. My first major gig with Kenny Garrett, and I was like, oh my gosh, oh, what am I gonna do? I don't know how I got through it, I skated through it. There was some skating there, there were some things I didn't know, but that taught me I can't rely on music. Can't yes. rely on music, so because you get lazy when you have the music, so that taught me you know, I need to, when I get a gig like that, I need to try to learn that stuff by, 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 by memory. There you go. Absolutely. That's a good lesson for you young folks. <laughs> Absolutely. Don't rely on the music because you can fly off the piano. It can get lost. Somebody could, anything. You might forget it. 
Right. And you know that could that could be a detrimental thing. And Newport, you know, that, that's a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big deal. So I'll never forget that. Now. So what, what do you tell someone like some young student says, well, Mr. Glasper, how do you memorize you know all of that music? What do right. you tell them? Well, I mean. I, Really, you actually memorize it before you know you memorized it. Mm -hmm. when you, don't me you don't really know you memorize something until you touch yourself. Mm -hmm. Because I have a tendency, we all have a tendency when music is there, you look at it because it's there. Right. Yeah. But when you take it away, it, ch it, it challenges you to, to memorize it. Amen. So really, it's just, it's just the point of doing it. Once you do it, it'll, it'll, be, it'll, come, it'll come fast. It'll come quicker than, than you actually think. Don't have the music, don't have it up there and then just try not to look at it. Take it off mm -hmm. and try to play the song, you know what I mean? But I think that, that's really the thing. Just, just keep playing it and try to play it over and over again without, right. without the chart. Repetition. And it'll come. Repetition. Yeah, that's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. So now, man, I love talking to you about uh, your high school. You grew up in Houston, Texas. Yep. And uh, that school you went to, that high school, put out so many bad cats, man. It's like, like yours. I did, well, you know, <laughs> hey, you know, I was telling somebody the other night, man, you know, it's just like you, Jason Moran, yeah. Eric Harlan, Chris Dave, uh, Chris Dave, Kendrick Scott, Kendrick Scott, Scott Jemire, Wal Walter Smith, Walter Smith, yeah. Mike Moreno. <laughs> yeah, man, Beyonce. Dude. Uh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of the cats, Brian Michael, a lot of the, lot, who ran lot of, the Who ran that school? So that, that was, that was uh, Bob Morgan, mm -hmm. Dr. Bob Morgan. Um, he's not there anymore. N another guy stepped in, but Dr. Morgan was there for like 30 years or something yeah. like that. You know what I mean? The good thing about that school, um, Bernice went there too. Yes, Travis, that's right. right. The good thing about that school, um, which my jazz director told us after the fact, like a few years ago, he let us know this other thing we were doing. He said that, um, we're the only school in the country that allowed people to teach that didn't have degrees. Wow. So our teachers in our jazz department all were, just did, cats. were just cats around the city. Right. Even in yeah. the art department, even in the visual art department. Wow. So the, the woman that found the school, I forgot her name, she made that a thing. She was like, I want people teaching that are in the, in the world doing it at, at right now yeah. because they're going to teach them the hip stuff that's happening now. Right, you know what I mean? Right, right, so right. most of the guys that came, they were coming in. It was always some somebody there. We had a few guys that would just come in different weeks. Right, right. Who's right. this? Oh, yeah, piano player that plays over here. Oh, cool. I mean, he was, and they're all good. You know, it was, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, it yeah. was amazing, man. It was amazing. It was never boring. It's what, crazy. But what a scene y'all had down there, man. Yep. You also told me, but didn't you say you guys had a, a listening class? That was another class, yep. So you would go into this class. It was a mandatory class, and there's no playing. You just listen. So everybody's allowed to bring in... CDs, or at that point it was tapes, actually. It right. CDs. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, no yeah. it was CDs yet. Gosh, I'm getting old. Um, Mike Moreno always had the hip stuff. He, had, <laughs> he always had all the stuff, all, all, right. all the newest stuff, man. Right. So he would bring in a lot of stuff, and our jazz director would bring in stuff, and we would just sit there and listen and talk yes. about what we're listening to. And, and how important is that to be able to learn how to listen? That's, the most, that's, that's half of the battle. Because yeah. some people, you can't get good if you don't know what to listen to right you know what i mean it, it, it can really stifle you if you don't hear new things oh what's that oh what's right. that oh what's that you might catch the thing that really changes your life what's that album who's yeah. that and then that person really changes your life you dive into that and you know but you want to listen to as much as much music as possible yeah. period yeah. in general and not just jazz music just music right. in general right you know right. all of our all of our favorite jazz musicians did not just listen to jazz Amen. That's right. <laughs> you know That's what I mean? Right. They were influenced by all kinds of music. Yeah. So if you really want to follow the tradition of jazz, that, that means not just listening to jazz, because the tradition of jazz means taking things from outside and bringing it in yes. and doing your thing with it. Doing and, your thing and, with and it. And everybody did that from the very beginning of time of, of, of the music on to now. You know, yeah. everybody thinks my favorite thing is the jazz tune. It's not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Broadway. Sound all the music. things you are, not a That's jazz right. tune. That's right. All those things are from Broadway. They took it from things that were cool in, in the moment yeah. and, you know, you know, you know, and, and, and made it made it hip and made it a jazz thing. You know, it's funny. And, you know, like uh, revisionist history says that you know um, Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie you know, created this whole new style of music out of thin air. They did create a new style of music, but not out of, not thin, out air. of thin air. You know, a lot of that music, all those bebop songs, were old Broadway show tunes. Absolutely. That they took the chords. Yep. And they wrote, they wrote their own melodies on top of it. Exactly. You know, exactly. so that's that's exactly what you're talking about. Yep. Yep. Let's get into some piano stuff. Mm -hmm. um, do you still have like a, uh, like what do you warm up with? Like what do you do when you get on the piano and say, oh, I got to loosen my chops I got to loosen my chops up. Yeah. I, I do some, I, I have a few things that I, I used to do when handing. Mm. Uh, you know, okay. I still do a few, a few, a few things. 
I got a little warm up thing. Tick, 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 tick. I got a little the warm up things where I do summer taste with both hands and like two or three things I, I do. I've heard you do that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and, and just have fun with it and move it through the keys and try to move it this hand in one key, that hand in another key. You know yeah. what I mean? And try to do it like that and stuff like that to make yeah. it to make it fun. G give some advice. I mean, I, I know this is a, a broad question mm -hmm. that we all get often, but uh, the young students who are going to see these videos, mm -hmm. uh, is there some sort of blanket advice or, you know, something that you can tell them? I would say what helped me was understanding that I have to know the history, but not get held back by the history. Mm -hmm. Those are two different things. There are people who know the history, but they're held back by it. So all they know is the history and they feel like that's the end all be all, right. and it's not. The history influences your future. Right. So the, the, to have the best future, you should know your history. To have the best future, you have to know your history. But always know that you have to progress yeah. and learn new things, you know what I mean? And that, that, that's the, that's the most important thing, thing I think I learned, yeah. you know what I mean? Because you have to make new history. Right. <laughs> right. right. You know what I mean? That's what history is. Somebody had to make it, then somebody had to do something. That, that's to keep the ball rolling, you know what I mean? But you need to have both because some people think, oh, I'm just going to do something new. And you, you don't know anything yet. You can't just go up there and I'm, I'm going to do this. Like glass, I'll yeah. be like Chris McBride. No, yeah. you know, so much work went into that. So much yeah. studying went into that. You know what I mean? So you have to do that. You have to study. You have to know your history. But at the same time, like I said, I always look forward and I always try to find who you are. You know, write songs, compose. Composing is very important. I feel like I feel like you find your own voice faster when you compose your own music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. that's you. What you just wrote never existed before that time yeah. when you did that. You can play standards all day, but you can't find yourself through standards. You know what I mean? You can't find yourself through standards, but you can find yourself quicker and know who you are and know your style. It, you know what, what what your ear leans to when you compose your own music. And don't don't wait to a certain to you feel like you have to wait to a certain time to compose your music. You write songs every day, most likely. Yeah. You know, right, we are right. musicians. We walk around humming stuff and just, we, we're the soundtrack to so many things we see. We hum it in our mind, but we don't make it a real thing. Yeah. And what, I, what I've done since 2005 to this day, all my albums, 90% of them are my voice notes in my phone. Because the music doesn't come to me when I sit down at the piano and decide I'm going to write a song. That's, That's <laughs> interesting, man, because, you know, actually, you could, you could help me with this, man. Mm -hmm. I, I was talking to this one cat, uh, Barry Green, ba great bass player mm -hmm. out of Cincinnati, and we were talking about composing. And I was saying that, like, like most of the songs I wrote on my first album, mm -hmm. we're getting to, I wrote mm -hmm. those songs when I was in high school mm -hmm. when, I didn't, when I didn't know that much. Right. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. I was just kind of learning how to write, and yeah. I was excited about writing, yeah. and I'm saying, oh, man, I got some ideas, you know? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I started learning stuff. I started learning the history. I started being around more cats. And, and, then, and, and, then, I, and then I went back to the piano. I was just like, uh, yeah. hmm. Right. The cat said that, hmm, okay, maybe I won't do that. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I need to do something a little more like, Mm, right. I don't know what to do now. You know, <laughs> so, so so I got to get back to that place where yeah. you know, like my brain was just like oh, yeah. I'm excited. I can't wait to do. I wasn't worried about like the you know the history of the music and what other cats would think. Mm -hmm. And you know, they might think this the song is corny. Right. But like I remember, uh, like Wayne Shorter's The Soothsayer. Woo, was my favorite. Like, that was like you know lost. Oh come on, man. Ugh. Like most most of the first songs I wrote were like versions, other versions of those songs, <laughs> yeah, 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 you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I go back and I say, man, I, I gotta find that again, you yeah, know what I mean? So yeah. like, how do you break out of that, yeah. you know, sort of? Like, that's kind of what you're talking about. Like, yep. don't be binded, you know, by, by history. Exactly, man, yeah. most of the songs I write are not when I'm at the piano. When, I'm at, when I sit down at the piano, I feel like that's when that kicks in. Mm -hmm. I'm at the instrument <laughs> and all of my knowledge of, of harmony and the rules right, right. sit in. But when I'm walking down the street and I see something or I see some scenery or something and a, and a melody pops into my head, right. that's not the piano. That's just me. That's right. just the experience. So I sing it in my phone immediately. Yeah. I sing the melody, whatever it is, I bass line, the melody, or a drum pattern, whatever comes, yeah. I sing it in my phone immediately. No matter what I'm doing, my, my friends, all my, my friends and family know if I run out of the room real quick yeah. because it's loud. You put I'm, some ideas I'm putting down. some ideas because in, in a second, the idea will be gone. Yes, you know, yes it will. we are. And I started paying attention to those ideas we let go. Yeah. And yeah. when you start paying attention to those ideas you let go of so many songs, and then you'll look at your phone one day and you'll be like, 
you'll see 50 songs in your phone. Yeah, and yeah. then at that point, you piece it together. You listen to the, you know, then you can figure it out. Because yeah, right. even my, my odd time signature songs, I never write odd time signature songs at the piano. Right. I, it's just a melody I like, and then I realize it's in the, oh, it's in nine. I didn't know yeah, it was in nine. Right. But it feels better because it's not, I'm not trying to play something in nine. Right. You know what right, I mean? Right. It's, it's, it's doesn't sound mathematical. Yeah. yeah right, exactly. Right, and that, right. so to me, that's the best way. Have, you know, everybody has their phone. You know what I mean? Right, the kids have right. phones now. I didn't have phones right. back then, but kids right. have phones now. So it's like, yo, sing all those melodies that you let go and watch how many you, you might not take all of them. You might, you might record 50. But you might not. You might. You might take five. Whatever. Yeah, you might take yeah. ten. Or you might take. I've played, paced songs together. I've had an idea, and half of an idea. Mm -hmm. And six months later, had another idea. Then I was like, oh, oh, yeah, right. And there's the song. So it yeah. doesn't even. You don't even have to write the whole song. You might have an idea. Keep that vamp. Keep right. that intro, or keep that piece of the song because you never know when you're going to need it. And right. you might be find the other piece a year later, two years later. Who knows? Right. And, you know, that's that's real. You got you got your phone on you? Of course. Uh, yep. Yeah. If, if you don't mind, give us a little taste of uh, some of your latest ideas. One of my ideas. Let me see. Let me see. We don't want no copyright infringement <laughs> from none of y'all out there. <laughs> Let me see. You know, it's just stuff, stuff like that. Yeah, see? I can be a random. I've been in the bathroom at the yeah. urinal, like, <laughs> you know, somebody's next to me, like, uh. Hey, man. Hey. <laughs> that's where it came. That's where it hit me. And like I said, a second later, it'll be gone. But that's real. You got to get it down before it leaves you. <laughs> and the, literally, I would say, if I had to add a percentage, at least 85% of my music since mm -hmm. 2005 yeah. has been because of this. Yeah, yeah. These things, not yeah. sitting at the piano writing this then later on getting to the piano and figuring it out I've, I've also learned to, to trust myself now like the other version of that sometimes i'll i'll either record myself at the piano or, or at the bass at home and i can only think of four bars at a time yeah right and before i used to be like come on finish it finish yeah, yeah, it yeah. flush it out right right and i'm just right. like i ain't got nothing right now right. i'm just going <laughs> to leave these four leave bars here right, 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 i'll get right. to it later exactly you know exactly so i got like sheets of music of like four and eight bar phrases yeah. and sooner or later absolutely i'll Boom. get back and put them all together for sure Robert, and, it, and sometimes it might it might be not you realize it might not be for you yeah the, what that piece might be for you to write for somebody else or you know what i mean there you go I, i've done that i've given people so many things from here it's like oh dig that great. you can use that writing for other people that's another thing that yeah. i don't think a lot of people do they don't they yeah. don't yeah you it doesn't know. have to be for you i remember johnny cole saying one time he said man you know the difference between you young cats jam sessions now versus then see y'all plays y'all play standards we used to play each other's tunes at sessions back in the day. It'd be like a composer yeah, workshop. Right, right. You know, hey, what you got? You know, right. let's play that. You right. know, run it down, you know. And so, that's how standards became standards, probably, I guess. Exactly. That's, <laughs> that's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Robert Glasper <laughs> is breaking it down. <laughs> and, uh, you know, th that sort of insight and, uh, and knowledge and wisdom that you mm -hmm. have is, uh, is why you've become who you've become mm -hmm. in this music world, man. Thank you, man. I Couldn't love you very, you, very brother. much. My dude. It's Robert right. Glasper, y'all. Yes, indeed. That's yes, a bad indeed. man. I'm Christian McBride. Y'all, peace out. Indeed. Yes, indeed. Thanks. Cool. For sure. Now, I got to go get my gig head on. Right. <laughs> <laughs>